Hello everyone, and welcome to Procure SQL's YouTube channel, where we make your databases run faster. I'm John Sterrett, the founder and CEO. Have you ever wondered what data skew or parameter sniffing is? In this tip, we're going to show you exactly what it is, and also why it might bite you in the butt. Hi, I'm John Sterling, and welcome to my SQL Server Tips. Data SKU is going to give us different execution plans based on the runtime values when an execution plan is built. Hold on, I think going through this demo will really help drive home exactly what's going on here. So we're going to go ahead and run this here, and there's two things I want you to see. If we were to filter this data by territory ID 20, we only have 100 rows, and 100 rows is such a small percentage of the total amount of data in this table. Where if we chose territory 9, this is the opposite. We got 273,000 rows here. So if we are building a stored procedure and executing it, and the first time it runs, if the parameter used for territory ID is 9 or 20, you can get various different execution plans. And those execution plans are going to be the best ones for the values used at runtime. So let's go ahead and take a look. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take all of our plans for our database and throw them away. So we have no plans in memory. I'm going to go ahead and run with territory 20. So remember, once again, this is going to be our small case here. So here you can see we got 100 rows. So it makes a lot of sense to use a nested loop, which is a nice way of saying do everything below for what's above here. So we have that. Okay. The other thing I want to show you Right? If we go to properties here for our select, and we go to parameter lists, this is runtime. So this is the first time we executed this batch of code. And we can see that the compiled parameter is the exact same value that we used at runtime. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and we are going to remove the execution plans in cache for our database. And now we're going to do the exact opposite. We're going to take the big set of data, the 273,000 rows, and we're going to run it here by forcing us to get a new execution plan. And we see some very different things in this execution plan. You see these two lines here, that means we're going parallel. And also, you can see here we're doing a clustered index scan. We've reached that tipping point where the optimizer thinks it could be better for us to scan the table than to actually go through and seek across an index that we already have here. And yes, there's a recommended index here, but we're going to go ahead and leave that out here um, for our demo here today. All right, so going back here, also just to show you again, just to drive home here, that we did throw away our execution plan and we built a new one with nine which was our example of a lot of data and it got us a very different execution plan than the small amount of data from territory equaling 20. so now we are going to go ahead and simulate three o'clock in the morning right this stored procedure is running just fine the stored procedure pops out of memory all right, so we're going to go ahead and initialize here. Now, in our case here, we're going to go ahead and run this guy. And we are going to see here that we are in our scenario where we're going across our big volume of data. We're using the parameters at runtime that are the same here. So if I go here to parameter list, we see this is the first time the stored procedure ran. The parameter is baked in and we're using it. Okay. 
So this ran 30 times, and it took about 13 seconds. So we'll just ballpark, say, about half a second each. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate that 3 o'clock in the morning, and our plan is going to go away. But this time, the first time the stored procedure runs, we're going to run it with the smaller amount of data using the different territory. And remember, when you build an execution plan, it's going to put the parameters used when it built it and drive the execution plan that's going to cache in memory for you off of that. So once again, as expected, here's our small 100 rows going into our nested loop. All right, so the question is, what happens now? Now that we have that plan in there for the small amount of data, what happens if we pump through our bigger data? Now, we have the territory 20 in the parameter when it was built. So we're going to use that execution plan. And what we're going to see here, we're only going to run this 20 times. And as this is running, you see a couple things that hopefully might jump out to you. We got a bigger, fatter arrow here going into our nested loop. Now remember, this is a nice way of saying for loop. For each row in the top, we're going to scan and do what's below it. So we are basically, in a nutshell, doing a for loop where we are going for i is 0 while it's less than 273,720. Go do this key look up here. So this is definitely not ideal. And we can see here, we actually took more time. So before, when we ran 30 times here, for the right plan for our big set of data, we were about half a second per execution. Now we're running this even less, and we're more than doubling, right? We're over a second per execution here, all right? So now hopefully this drives home the standard example that happens very often within SQL Server of plan caching and having a plan that is cached that may not be ideal for your workload. If you enjoyed this tip, please hit that big thumb up button. Also, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and put them down below. Also, if you're new to the Procure SQL YouTube channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can get our future tips as well. Thank you.